welcome to InstaFesta 2020. Thanks for joining us this November. My name is Claire Marie Lim and I'm a music technologist and a Bitwig certified trainer. The music that you're hearing right now was made in Bitwig Studio, which is an amazing music making software made by Bitwig in Berlin. Bitwig is one of my favorite software programs to get creative in. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the basics of using Bitwig Studio, take you through some of its features and its workflow, and we'll take a look at an example of a Bitwig project. So let's get started. So here we are in Bitwig Studio and we've got a project pulled up. Like all Bitwig projects, this project is organized in two tracks, which are different musical layers or instruments. And each horizontal row here is a track. We can put different kinds of information into these tracks like audio and MIDI, which we'll get into in a little bit. But each track over here contains some kind of signal path. And really all that that means is some kind of sound is being heard in each track. Each track also has its own set of common mixing controls. So for example, on this pink track over here, I have an instance of Phase 4, which is one of Bitwig's native synthesizers and also one of my personal favorites. I can solo this track to only hear Phase 4 by clicking on the track's S button. And let's take a listen. Great. I can also mute the track if I don't want to hear it by clicking on the M button. And now when I play, I'll hear everything except that track. I can also adjust how loud the track is by moving its volume fader higher or lower. So this entire section of Bitwig here is called the Arrange Timeline or the Arranger. And it lets us organize our musical ideas in a linear fashion from left to right in our tracks, which is pretty common for most digital audio workstations. But let's take a listen to a section of what I have in the Arranger right now. I can click anywhere along the row of numbers on top of the Arranger to start playing from a certain bar or measure. And it looks like there are a lot of things going on around bar 13. So let's start there. And now I can press the space bar to start and stop playing in the arranger. I can also double click on top to jump to a certain point in the arranger. Like at the end over here around bar 25. Let's jump there. spacebar to stop. Nice. So the arranger is a great place for sketching out and producing full length songs that are structured in a specific way over time. But how did we even get here and populate this whole part? So in this particular project, we started with ideas in the clip launcher, which you see on the left over here. The clip launcher, which is also called the launcher for short, is a sequencer in Bitwig where you can accumulate lots of different musical ideas and then you can mix and match them in a non linear fashion. Each of these cells over here has a clip inside it, which is colored. And I like to think of clips as containers for musical ideas. So clips can either store MIDI notes or audio. For example, in this track that's labeled dark bass, I'm going to solo it and let's launch this clip over here. I can do this by clicking on the sideways triangle button that's on the top left of the clip. And as a general rule of thumb, anytime you see a sideways triangle pointing to the right, that usually indicates some kind of play function. So let's play or launch this clip. Great. Now I can double click on this clip to see its contents below. So let's double click. 
And now in the detail editor, which is this lower section, we can see that this is a MIDI clip, and that's because it has MIDI notes in it. MIDI notes are these long rectangles that we see, and they match the color of the track, and in this case, they're brown. And these notes are letting me communicate with Bitwig Studio and tell it which notes to play on this particular bass synth. So let's go ahead and stop this clip by clicking on its stop clip button near the track hitter. It's this square that's right over here. And as another general guideline, anytime you see a square icon, it usually means to stop something. So let's stop the dark bass. Now let's take a look at an audio clip, which is the other kind of clip that I mentioned. Let's unsolo the dark bass, and I'm going to scroll down my lined up tracks. So now let's solo this track that says Gnarly Quirks. And visually, we already see that it does look a little bit different. So let's launch one of the clips and see what's inside of it. Cool. So now in the detail editor, instead of MIDI notes, we see that we've got a waveform. This is what will show up for audio clips, which could be things that we've recorded into Bitwig, or they could be samples. Let's unsolo this track as well. Now, something else that we notice in the clip launcher is that these clips can all be organized into groups called scenes, which are these vertical columns. We can use scenes either for triggering those clips together at the same time, or for composing and sections like a verse or a chorus or a breakdown. And in this particular case, we've already got some labels over here. So let's take a listen to what some of these scenes and clips sound like. And let's start off with the intro. So let's jump to the main scene. And at the end, if I launch an empty scene, I can also stop all of the currently playing clips. And that's because an empty scene would have no clips in it. And it would only have the empty clip slots with the stop buttons, the squares. So let's stop everything right now. And if I've worked on a couple of ideas in the clip launcher, there are a few ways that I can bring them over into the arranger. And I think I'd like to do that now so that I can add another section to the end of my linear arrangement over here in the arranger. One of the easiest ways to do this is to just record directly into the arranger. So let's do this at the end of the material that I have so far in the arrange timeline. I'm going to click at the number 41 for bar 41, and then we'll start recording by pressing on the circle button at the top of Bitwig Studio, which will let me record into the arranger. So now the circle icon is lit up in red, and let's launch some clips and see what happens. Great. So I just stopped recording and now we can see that my clip launch sequences have been recorded into the arranger from the launcher. After using the launcher, you might also notice that the arranger is temporarily grayed out. So some of the clips look less bright than they initially were. And that's really to protect anything that might have been already recorded into the arranger from being written over. So Bitwig tries to be a little bit intuitive. If I want to be able to edit the material again, I can press on this button over here that's between the launcher and the arranger to switch playback to the arranger. So let's click on that. I can now move these clips by clicking on the top half of them and dragging them left or right. I can also select multiple clips by dragging over a section of the timeline across different tracks and then clicking and moving these clips together. I can also delete any clips by selecting them and then pressing back or delete on my keyboard. And if I want to make copies of clips, I can hold down the Option or the Alt key, and I can click and drag my clips around. Let's also do this with the existing last bass clip over here. I'd like to make a copy of this in the new section I've created, so let's hold down Option or Alt, 
and we'll click and drag it over. In addition to these ways of working with clips, I can also just directly copy clips from the launcher into the arranger. For example, I'd like to put this chord loop audio clip into my new section as well, even though I didn't launch it just now when I was recording. So I can click on it and I can copy it by pressing Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC. I can then click in the arranger wherever I'd like to put it and I can press Command V on a Mac or Control V on a PC. And there it is. So that's a basic idea of how some of these essential functions in Bitwig Studio work. And we'll revisit some of these as we go along in this video. Now this project has a number of elements in it already, but I'd still like to add a few more on. For the main section of the project, I think it might do well with maybe a couple more layers like vocal samples. Maybe that's a good place to start off. And I think I'd like to experiment first in the clip launcher. So we'll head over there. I'm going to create a new audio track underneath my existing tracks. So there are a couple of ways to do this. And one of the ways is to right click or control click in the empty space where there's a plus icon and I have the option to then add an audio track. I'm then going to control click or right click again on the name of the track and rename the track. So let's call this vocals and we'll press enter. So now that we've got this audio track pulled up, I'd like to browse for some vocal loops that I can add on. And my favorite way to do this is to open up the browser panel in Bitwig Studio by clicking on this folder icon on the bottom right. So here is the browser panel. And then I'm going to head over to the samples section in the browser by clicking on this waveform icon at the top of the browser panel. So let's do that. This is going to let me access the library of samples that are available to me. And I can also make use of the search bar at the top of the panel to help me a little bit with finding a good loop. So let's go ahead and type a vocal loop. Great, so now I have some options for loops. If I want to check out how these sound, I can hover over the names of each of the loops and click on the play buttons to the right. And of course, to stop these previews, I can click on the stop buttons. I actually liked the option that I first played. I believe it was this one. Yeah. Great. So I'm going to click and drag this vocal clip into my new audio track and make sure that it lines up with the main scene. I can now launch the entire scene to hear this in context. So let's take a listen. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Now, one thing I noticed is that the length of this particular clip doesn't exactly match the length of the other phrases in clips. So this means that when the vocal clip loops around, its starting point doesn't quite coincide with the starting points of all of the other clips. So to check things out a little more, I'm going to pop open the inspector panel. And I can do this by heading over to the bottom left of Bitwig and clicking on this little eye icon that looks like an info sign. And I can then select the vocal clip and take a look at its properties. There's a parameter over here that's called length to the left. It looks like in our current project at this tempo and in this time signature, the length of this clip in bars is three bars and two additional beats. Three, the first number indicates the bars and the two, the second number indicates the number of beats. And in a lot of compositions, we usually have loops that are in uh, two or four or eight bars and multiples of those numbers. So three bars and two beats is a little bit out of the ordinary. Let's try changing a few things and make this clip's length exactly two bars. So I can click on the number two, which is the two extra beats, and I can drag it down to zero and I can then click on the three and drag that down to two so that this is exactly two bars. Now let's relaunch the scene and take a listen again. Cool, so 
so now everything's lined up a little bit differently. I also double clicked on the clip to see it in the detail editor. That said though, I did quite like the original rhythmic displacement, so I might go back to how that was. And in Bitwig Studio, if I ever want to undo anything, I can always press Ctrl Z on a PC or Command Z on a Mac. So I might actually go ahead and do this. So now we've got the original clip back that you can see in the launcher. So in addition to changing the clip's loop length, I can also edit the information within a clip. Let's zoom out a little of the detail editor, and I can do this by hovering over the top of the clip in the detail editor. And when I see the magnifying glass icon, I can click and drag up and down to either zoom in or zoom out depending on what I like to do. Now to make this clip a little more interesting, I think I want to do some vocal edits by slicing up some of the audio and rearranging a few of the content pieces internally. Let's solo this track so that we can hear just the vocals and launch the clip again. <laughs> I think before the start of the second phrase over here, I think it could be interesting to do some kind of repeated rhythm with the, the end of the first vocal phrase. So I'm gonna use my magnifying glass to zoom in a little bit more. And then I'm going to use my cursor to select this short period of time in the clip. I'm gonna press Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC and make a duplicate of just that portion. So now let's take a listen to the clip. Right. And I can continue to make edits even while the clip is playing. So let's go for it. Nice. Now we can see that within each of my clips or within this particular clip over here, we have multiple events. That's what we call each of these small portions, an event. So with this in mind, for individual events, I have more ways of editing them. And I can access these options by clicking on the event menu along the top. Once I have an event selected, this will pop up. And when I click on this little square, I have the option to treat the event in a couple of different ways. Let's reverse the current event that I have selected. And let's click on this other event over here. I'd like to maybe scale it by 50%. You'll see that it has become half of its original length. And then I can make another instant duplicate of it by pressing Command D or Control D. Let's do one more edit. And I think I'd actually like to make this a four bar loop. So I'm going to scroll over here to the end of the clip. Let's extend this loop length by clicking on the loop region and dragging out to the right until it's right before the number five. And I'll duplicate this last section over here. So let's press Command D or Control D one more time. And now let's listen to everything in context. We're going to unsolo the track and let's launch the whole scene. Great, so now we've got some edited events within the clip. I like what I have so far with this vocal loop, though I definitely like to make it a little more affected sounding. So let's add an audio effect to this track. We don't have any audio effects yet on this particular track, and I can check that by heading over to the device panel at the bottom of Bitwig. It's this third icon from the left, so let's click there. And true enough, we don't have anything on it yet. So let's head back into the browser. And this time, instead of being in the samples section, I'm going to head over to the devices section by clicking on the first icon over here. 
A device in Bitwig can be a number of things, including an instrument or an effect, and even within effects, you could have audio effects or you could have MIDI effects. So since we're dealing with audio, let's use an audio effect. One of my favorite audio effects in Bitwig is Delay 1. It's pretty simple, but it's highly effective too. So I'm going to type in Delay into the search bar. Let's clear vocal loop out and let's do Delay. And if I scroll up, ah, there it is. So let's click and drag and drop it onto our vocals track. Once delay one has been loaded up, I think it could be really useful to have a starting point for the kind of effect that I want. So I'm going to click on this folder icon on the title bar of the delay, and it's going to give me access to some delay one presets. The great part about this is that now I can just browse for different presets in the pop-up browser that has just appeared over here. I can also look under specific descriptors such as clean or detuned or metallic for different kinds of delay presets. And you know what? I think let's try something uh, clean to start off with. So here's a preset that's called Tesseract. I'm going, going to click on it and press OK to load it up. Let's solo the vocal track and take a listen. While the clip is playing, I might also click on a few of the knobs on the delay one device to start tweaking parameters until I get a sound I like. So let's go for it. Nice, I'm pretty happy with that, so let's just leave that as it is. So I'm liking what I've got so far in the main scene. Let's add on one more element. And I'm thinking some kind of high pad might be interesting. So this time let's use an instrument track, which will let us use MIDI information. Similar to before, let's head over to the browser. And this time I'm gonna type in PolySynth. PolySynth is a subtractive synthesizer that's also native to Bitwig Studio. And this time let's drag and drop it below our vocal track. Aha! Uh -huh. Bitwick is pretty intuitive and it immediately creates an instrument track for us with polysynth on it. So now let's rename this pad, right clicking and going to rename it and press enter. Let's solo the pad now and let's also browse for a preset like before. So let's click on the polysynth folder icon and let's look in the pad category over here. So click on pad. And maybe let's also look under the uh, descriptor. Let's do soft. Okay, so looking at these options, uh, moody pad one <laughs> sounds like an interesting option. So let's go with that for now. I'm going to click on it and press OK. Here is the preset. And to get started with some MIDI programming, I'm going to head back into the launcher. Let's double click in this empty clip slot to insert a new MIDI clip. And I can double click on the clip again to see it show up in the detail editor. And this is a one bar long loop. Now if I'm not wrong, the key of the song is D minor. So I'm going to double click inside the detail editor and let's insert a new MIDI note. Maybe let's do D4 to start off. And maybe I'll do another note on A4 as well so that we get a fifth. I can then select both of the notes by clicking and dragging across the two of them and stretching them out by clicking on their top right corners and dragging them to the right. Let's take a listen. Great. I'm also going to head over to the device panel and tweak some of the knobs on the preset to fine tune the sound a little bit. Great, so now let's unsolo the track and listen to everything in context in the main scene. So just to 
wrap up, I'm going to select both of these clips at the same time by holding down shift and clicking on the both of them. Let's copy them by pressing Control c on a PC or Command c on a Mac. And let's paste them into our main section in the arranger. So I'm going to click over here around bar 13, which is where we also listened to at the start of this video. And I'm going to press Control v on a PC or Command v on a Mac. And there we go. Now you might have also noticed that even though the clips had different lengths, Bitwig was able to match their loops up. So because our vocal loop was four bars long, we now have four repetitions of our one bar pad loop to correspond to it. Let's click on this button again to switch playback to the arranger and we'll take a listen from the beginning of my linear arrangement and I might make some tweaks along the way. So mixing a couple of volumes, maybe adding or removing some extra clips and here we go. And that was my arrangement. So through using some MIDI and audio manipulation techniques, we were able to use Bitwig Studio to flesh this out a little bit more. So that was it for this video. Thank you so much for spending some time with us to get to know Bitwig Studio. For more information and to download Bitwig Studio, you can head over to bitwig.com. And we've also got another InstaFesta video ready for you. In the next video, we'll dive even deeper into more features of Bitwig. We'll take a look at more devices, MIDI polyphonic expression in Bitwig, the grid, as well as Bitwig's unified modulation system. So I hope to catch you over there. Once again, my name is Claire Marie Lim. I'm a Bitwig certified trainer, and I hope you're enjoying InstaFesta 2020.